you are an international medical graduate who wants to practice medicine in the United States. That's great, that's wonderful, you have made an excellent decision. Now the next step is to find out how to do that. The only way to practice medicine as a doctor in the United States, having graduated medicine from a country outside the US, is to take the USMLE STEP exams. USMLE stands for the United States Medical Licensing Examination and the tests themselves are called the STEP tests. Basically you have to climb three steps, step one, step two and step three. These are the three tests that you have to pass and score very high on. Now technically there are three exams but in reality there are more like five because step two and step three have two parts but we'll get to that in a bit. These three videos, each one dedicated on each step, will be especially useful for those of you who are just starting their USMLE journey or deciding whether to start the journey or not. Honestly, I wish there were more like these videos when I was first deciding whether to start preparing for the USMLE step exams or not because these exams tend to sound and look more difficult than they really are but trust me, with the right motivation and preparation they are very much doable. Detailed information on how exactly the United States medical educational system works you can find by watching my video dedicated on this topic because I truly believe that you must understand why they made you take this step exam as an international medical graduate who wants to practice medicine in the United States. Basically the fact is that every US medical student have to pass these tests. They have to study for them, they have to prepare and they have to score very high. And now you being as an international medical graduate, they want to make sure that your knowledge is equivalent to the medical knowledge a United States medical student receives. That's why they make you take these steps. Now uh, here let me go over the step exams quickly and what uh, they test on and when do people here in the United States take them normally and in each video uh, we'll discuss more uh, of each exam here. Alright, so the step one exam is taken normally after the first two years of medical school. Basically the first two years are basic sciences, right? So step one tests basic sciences. Step 2 has two parts, step 2 CK which is clinical knowledge which is a computerized test again and CS stands for clinical skills which is a practical test. Now these two tests uh, or these two exams because the CS is not a test, it's a practical exam are taken normally in the fourth year of medical school and the last one step 3 which also has two parts, it's a two-day exam, computerized exam, MCQs and some uh, clinical cases that you actually uh, do on the computer. They are taken normally after the first year of residency here because it's very very clinically oriented but for international medical graduate most people prefer to take this step 3 before they apply for residency because this make uh, their application more competitive and uh, keeping in mind that the competition is really really big here for the spots that they have available for residency in the United States it's a very good idea actually to try to um, prepare and pass and actually score high on the step 3 before you apply for residency. Now the trick is that um, 7 years after you take and you pass your step 1, you have 7 years basically from the date you pass step 1 to take all 3 exams or basically 5 exams, right? Uh, in reality. Because if you take step one and seven years later you fail to take all of them for example you have taken step one and step two CK and CS but you haven't taken step three all your results will be deleted from the system they will not exist and you will have to retake all of the exams again but if you take step three if you take them all uh, basically you seal your USML examination and you don't have to take any of these tests ever again. This video will be dedicated entirely on step 3. So the step 3 is a two-day exam. On the first day you will have multiple choice questions which will very much be like the step 1 exam questions. 
Here on this day they will test you on uh, foundational sciences, understanding of biostatistics and epidemiology, interpretation of medical literature, application of social sciences including communication and interpersonal skills, medical ethics, systems-based practice and patient safety. Whereas on day two, day two has two parts. The first part is again MCQs which are more clinically oriented, more diagnosis, prognosis, screening and management. And the second part are the 13 CCS cases. CCS stands for computer based case scenarios. Basically this is the computerized version of the step 2 CS exam. Let's go over the structure of our step 3 exam, the last of all USMLE step exams. So step 3 exam is divided into two parts, day 1 and day 2. And each day is as difficult as any other uh, of the step exams. Now day one comprised of questions which are more basic science oriented. It looks more like step one questions than anything else. Uh, it's a seven hour uh, exam uh, and uh, the questions are 233 maximally. They are divided into six blocks uh, with a maximum of 38 to 40 MCQs per block and you're gonna have one hour to solve all the questions in each block and again uh, one hour you have break time here. Whereas day two, day two has two parts. The first part is MCQs. You have 180 MCQs divided into six blocks with 30 MCQs, 30 questions per block and you have only 45 minutes to solve all the questions in each block. It's a nine hour exam and this was the first part of it. The second part is the most interesting part. It's a com it comprises of 13 CCS cases. CCS stands for computer based uh, case simulations. Uh, basically this is the computerized version of the step 2 CS uh, exam. You have 13 patients that you have to diagnose and treat accordingly and for each patient you're gonna have 10 to 20 minutes uh, to treat them, diagnose them and to send them home or uh, keep them in the hospital uh, depending on the case of course. The importance of the results on your step 3 depend entirely on when you take it. If you are an IMG and you want to increase your chances of matching by taking step 3 before you apply for residency, then you aim for higher score. Although not so high scores are needed here, anything above 220 is more than enough. But if you're already in residency and you take the test, then any passing score which is above 196 will suffice. Once you're in residency, no one really cares about your step 3 score as long as you pass the test as you cannot continue into second year of residency if you haven't passed the step 3. And this becomes a problem for your program director and for your residency program if you do not pass your step 3 in a timely fashion. More info on the step 3 exam you can find again on the official USMLE website www.usmle.org. My last words for you guys is that without a doubt the USMLE exams are one of the most difficult exams in the world and you're gonna have to have a lot of mental, physical stamina and in-depth comprehensive medical knowledge in order to tackle them. But having said that they're not impossible, they're very much doable with the right motivation and preparation. It takes a lot of dedication, it takes a lot of time and hard work but it's totally worth it. Just imagine this warm feeling of satisfaction and being proud of yourself that you have actually tackled the most difficult exams in the world. Just imagine this feeling, visualize it and I'm sure that each and every one of you who puts the hard work will be able to experience this in reality. And remember that success comes to those who are looking for it, who are working towards it, who are dreaming of it, who are willing to put the effort and the hard work towards it. And that's why we are here for to facilitate you, to help you through this process, to guide you with, with directions or with medical knowledge, with whatever we can. And I wish you good luck for you all. I'm sure that you will all succeed in your journey. And also let me know if you have any questions whatsoever. I'm always here to help you guys. Good luck again and see you on the next video.